Hello, I'm Betsy Ross and welcome to Healthline. Colon cancer is one of the most curable forms of cancer if detected early. Recognizing that March is National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, we're pleased to announce that our first segment is sponsored by Tri-State Gastroenterology Associates. Dr. Ross McHenry will talk to us about colon cancer. Dr. Carla Patton will take us inside a colonoscopy exam. And Matt Grimes will share his personal cancer story. That's all next and more on Healthline, presented by the Northern Kentucky Medical Society. Our first guest today is going to help us get comfortable talking about a disease that, well, frankly, makes most of us uncomfortable. Dr. Ross McHenry is from Tri-State Gastroenterology Associates. Doctor, thank you for joining us thank today. You. Obviously, we feel a little squeamish talking about this topic, but why is it so important for us to talk about colon cancer? Well, colon cancer is the third most common cancer in men and women, but it's the second most common cause of cancer-related deaths in the United States and colon cancer is a preventable disease. If we detect it early, we can cure it about 90% of the time. Of course, we hear a lot about colon cancer and treatment things like that, but exactly what is it? And we have a diagram that will kind of walk us through exactly what is colon cancer. Colon cancer is, is in this model here, most colon cancer starts as colon polyps or little lumps or bumps in the colon. And some polyps can grow, become bigger, and form these large masses that are irregular. And this is what colon cancer is. So we have the polyps that can or cannot be cancer. Do you take those out? Do you leave them in? What do you do if you find polyps? When we find colon polyps, we like to remove them so they don't have a chance to become colon cancer. Okay. How do we get polyps? Why do they happen in the first place? Well, we think that colon polyps arise from our diets, uh, eating a high-fat, low-fiber diet. Part of it is a genetic or hereditary predisposition to colon polyps. If somebody has a family history of colon cancer, or colon polyps, they are predisposed to developing colon polyps or okay. cancer. Okay, so we watch the polyps, but who is at risk to develop colon cancer overall? And we have some facts and figures on that as well. Family history is an important risk factor. Uh, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, cigarette smoking, al heavy alcohol use can all lead to colon polyps. A diet that's uh, High in red meats or fat, low in fiber, can also predispose us to developing colon polyps. Okay, what are the signs and symptoms of colon cancer? Do we have symptoms? Well, what we really like to do is find it before it causes any symptoms, because if we find it early, we can have a good chance of curing it. But the problem with colon cancer is sometimes the symptoms it presents with are very nonspecific. Uh, anemia could be a cause. Being fatigued, tired due to a low blood count is one of the signs of colon cancer. A change in your bowel habits, constipation or diarrhea can be a sign of colon cancer. Abdominal pain or seeing blood in the stool, either bright red blood or dark blood. Is there an age that we should be thinking about getting a test for colon cancer, whether or not we have the symptoms? We currently recommend that everybody over the age of 50 be screened for colon cancer, either by doing an x-ray or by checking stools for blood or by doing a colonoscopy. And talk a little bit about how we do those tests. What kind of tests are available now? There are several screening tests that are available. One is a chemical test to check for chemical signs of blood in the stool. That's called a fecal hemocult test. Another test is doing a sigmoidoscopy. We'll use a small flexible tube just to look inside the last part of the colon. Another test is an x-ray called a barium enema, where you receive an enema of barium and they take an x-ray of your colon. And another test is called a colonoscopy, where after adequate preparation and with sedation, we use a flexible tube to look at the entire colon. And if we find polyps at that time, we go ahead and remove them. Okay, and we will be talking a little bit more about colonoscopies and really get a better look at that in just a little bit. But 
So you've had the test. Let's say the test does show that there are either polyps that could be cancerous or colon cancer in itself. So what's next? What is the treatment? The standard treatment for treating colon cancer is an operation to remove that portion of the colon that contains the cancer and the surrounding tissues so we see exactly what stage that colon cancer is. Sometimes we give chemotherapy or radiation therapy before or after the operation depending on its stage and depending on its location. Do you always do surgery? Is that usually the first option? It's usually the first option for treating colon cancer. Of course, this is something that's uh, a disease that we have been talking about a lot more recently. I think everybody's familiar with Katie Couric and her crusade against colon cancer after the death of her husband. But raising the awareness of colon cancer, I know the uh, American uh, Cancer Society has been very involved in raising the awareness and getting people to talk about this, this squeamish subject. It's, uh, we're very grateful to the American Cancer Society and Katie Couric for her courage in making people aware of colon cancer screening because colon cancer is a preventable disease. If we detect it early, we have a real good chance of preventing a lot of misery for people. And backing back, what can we do to prevent this? Do we change our diets? Do we change our lifestyle? Will that give us a better chance of not getting this disease to begin with? One thing we can do is eat more fiber, reduce the fat consumption in our diets, be more physically active, uh, watch our weights, and, um, and get a screening test done. It's probably a good idea for all kinds of things that might ail us. Doctor, yes. thank you so much for being with us and talking about this subject that really needs to come to the forefront. I really appreciate your time on this. We will be right back with Matt Grimes and his personal cancer journey. Stay with us. Last year, Insight surprised 10 high school seniors with college scholarships worth $1,000 each. This year, we're doing it again. If you're a high school senior who plans on attending one of the many great colleges in Northern Kentucky, see your guidance counselor or drop by one of our many Insight customer service centers in Northern Kentucky to pick up an application. Return it by April 7th to be eligible. Then make sure you show up to class because you never know when the Insight team might drop by with a big check that has your name on it. Would you like to double, triple, or even quadruple your income and eliminate your credit card debt? I make $5,000 a month of residual income. Income is at a six-figure income. I'll be making over $8,000 a month this month. That first month, we made over $3,000 right out of the gate. Thousands of people are getting started by requesting a free DVD that shows them the way to financial freedom. Like Trina, a soccer mom who started her home-based business part-time and with the help of a mentor, made $30,000 the first year and $130,000 the next. Or Brandy, who has now become financially secure and is living the American dream. The free DVD really opened my eyes. We made over $18,000 last month. And there's no experience necessary. Our DVD shows how a mentor works with you to assure your success. Go to 92GetMoney.com and get started today. And respond now while this is still a free service. Go to 92GetMoney.com. That's 92GetMoney.com. 92GetMoney.com. Welcome back. In today's Medical Minutes segment, we're pleased to have Matt Grimes, the owner of Colonial Cottage, here to share his personal cancer story. Matt, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. We just finished talking about how most colon cancer cases are in folks 50 and over. You were 37 when this all happened. Tell us about your diagnosis and how you figured out that something wasn't right. Well, as Dr. Patton will say later, I, I was a bit of an odd case. Um, it's just knowing your body. And, and I was a classic guy. I never went to a doctor unless something was broken or bleeding. Well, this time uh, I did happen to identify some blood in my stool. And it went on for a few more weeks and I was comfortable with it. And I just decided, hey, I need to go get this, this checked out. And that was how long ago? That was two years ago. Um, I first started noticing this in, in July. And then I finally got to my appointment uh, in August, and I really got it looked at uh, by December. 
the colonoscopy in December. So what was the diagnosis? What did they tell you? Uh, they came out and said I had cancer and I had a tumor that had to be removed and they wouldn't be able to stage it until they actually took it out and took a look at it. Uh, it was a very scary period for us. So then what happened? Then immediately the fear. You're told you have a tumor that has to be removed. It, it creates a lot of fear and you sit down and you talk to your family and then you go to resources. The American Cancer Society was a wonderful resource for us. And then we started doing the research and the doctor's advice, Dr. Patton's advice, you got to get this out, go ahead and get it scheduled. So we started interviewing doctors, physicians, medical services and looking at what resources were out there that uh, would help us in this situation. That's a very good point because it may be your diagnosis but it really affects more than just you. You have a family that you have to think about. You have a mm -hmm. business that you have to think about. How did you deal with your diagnosis with your family and your coworkers? Well, first we cried. Uh, I think the fear of the unknown, and then you get then you get aggressive. Then you find out what needs to be done. You find out what options that you have, and you sit down. You talk frankly with your family. Hey, this is what we've got going on. Uh, this is the course of action that, that we need to take. And then you sit down and do have a, a small business and, and you look at the business and you, you talk to the people around the business and, and people come from out of the woodwork. They hear, hey, you've got a difficult situation. Tons of support in the community and it's out there and there's people who are willing to give it to you. You just have to let them know that you need it. Uh, that, hey, I've got these concerns. People come from all over the place to help you. It's very, this what's really nice about this community is the level of support that you do get. You have children? I have two children, uh, young children, eight, uh, eight and nine. Um, they, they actually, we kind of made it fun. They, if colon cancer can be fun, <laughs> uh, it was, uh, they couldn't speak real, real, real well at the time. And it, it turned out Daddy uh, ended up having a tuber in his belly that, that <laughs> had to be removed. Uh, so from that point on, I, I had a tuber mm. that, that had to go, and that's the way we related with it. So, so you had surgery? I did have the surgery. Uh, followed up a month after the surgery with, uh, with chemotherapy for 24 weeks, which is, as I understand, pretty standard. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the colon, the colon people uh, that you that you meet, and you meet all the other cancer patients that are receiving the chemotherapy, they're all there to offer their support. They're there to offer their stories. It lets you know that you're not alone, and there are people, and there are resources out there to help you. You look like you're doing great. You look wonderful. How are you doing? I am doing well. I'm doing very well. The life is back to normal. Uh, people like you give me an opportunity to to let others know that hey there's help out there the, like, the kind of help that I received from from sources that I would have never expected uh, this is a tight community we are a tight community the people who do are diagnosed with cancer who will be diagnosed with cancer or family members thereof there are people out there who can help you and we're all willing to to share the experiences that we went through if it helps you deal with the situation you've got. And what kind of advice would you give? Again, you're atypical. You aren't in the age group, but what kind of advice can you give the rest of us who maybe suspect something's wrong, but you know, a little reluctant to go to the doctor like you were? You look at the people around you. Yes, I was reluctant. Yes, most people I know are reluctant. You've got a suspicion, hey, I've got blood in, in, blood in my stool that it's not supposed to be there. I gave it a week. It didn't go away. I gave it another week. It didn't go away. I gave it another week. Eventually, I picked up the phone and said, hey, doc, I need to see you. And no, nothing's broken this time. Hmm. Um, but I've got some issues. So the point is to know your body. Be aware of changes. We all had changes. Every day we get older, we've got something going on. If you think it's not the way it's supposed to be, it's probably not. Matt. See the professionals. Great, Matt. Great advice. So glad to have you here. It's so good to see that you're doing so well. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your story today. Sure, it will help a lot of our viewers watching to really have the courage to go get something checked if it's not quite right. We'll be back with a unique inside look at a colonoscopy exam right after this break.
This is a legal announcement. If you're suffering from mesothelioma, call the nationally acclaimed law offices of Weiss and Luxembourg, who have successfully represented thousands of asbestos victims all over America, winning verdicts in excess of $500 million. Call now to see if you're entitled to compensation for your pain and suffering. It's not too late to protect your family's financial future. Call Weiss and Luxembourg right now for a free and confidential consultation. Call 1-800-950-1391. That's 1-800-950-1391. Well, and you all know John from Corporate Communications. Hi, John. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here. John was asked to come in and help promote how we're changing as a company. You all know that because Insight offers TV, Internet, and phone, we have become a complete communications company, or... We thought it'd be a long shot, you know, corporate mall. C3 for short. C3 is modern, it's high-tech, it's catchy, it's stupid. <laughs> Look, we're not about a letter with a three on it. What we're about is being local. And straightforward. And keeping things simple. Is that changing? No. Sure, we're now more than just cable TV, but we're still inside. We, we did do t-shirts. We got, we got other colors. Where do you see the hat? <laughs> Well, as we've talked about, many people are apprehensive about having a colonoscopy. Our next guest, Dr. Carla Patton, is going to take us into the procedure room where we'll get an inside look at this. Dr. Patton is from Tri-State Digestive Disorder Center, the sponsor of this segment. Dr. Patton, welcome. Thank you. Colonoscopy, you hear the term, but what is it? It's actually an examination where we look at the lining of the colon using a flexible instrument called a colonoscope to look for abnormalities such as colon polyps, colon masses, and other things that we can treat while we're in there. All right, so let's say we have a colonoscopy schedule. Tell us about the preparation for this. The preparation is the, people, the, the thing that people really are kind of a little apprehensive about mostly because it's a bowel preparation that is a laxative type preparation people have to take the day before, do a clear liquid diet to clean everything out of the colon. And the day you come for the test is the much easier part, as we like to say, because people are sedated for the procedure. You get an IV in, then once we get you in the procedure room, start giving you medications to relax you so that you're very comfortable and pretty much asleep during the procedure. But do I know what's going on? Generally, no. 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 Most people wake up, they ask you, uh, did the procedure start yet? And they don't even know that it happened. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of nice. The medicines work very well. All right. Well, let's take a look at the procedure. It's about two and a half minutes here that we'll walk through very quickly okay. about how this procedure works. So sure. if you could kind of walk us step by step through this procedure. Okay. This is one of our associates, Dr. Saldman, who is preparing to start the procedure. He's talking with the nurses and the patient. He already has the patient sedated, and now he's getting ready to insert the colonoscope. He uses some lubrication that just helps the scope glide easier throughout the colon. Now he's actually doing the procedure. As you can see, he's moving the colonoscope in and out through the colon. He's watching a video monitor screen to see what's going on, um, and that will come up here shortly. Now, what are you looking for when you see this? Basically, this is a very normal picture right here. This is the normal colon. That's a good preparation. You can see the vasculature uh, behind the colon, and I sheen to the colonic wall. And you're just going throughout the entire colon to the end, um, which is the cecum, which will come up here shortly. And that's how we maneuver through. There are knobs that turn right and left and up and down that help us steer through the colon. There are also buttons for suction, flushing, and to put air into the colon so that we can distend things. That's the end of the colon, which is the cecum. That little crescent-shaped area is the appendiceal orifice, which is where the appendix attaches. Now you'll see here, this is a polyp. This is a small sessile polyp in the colon, but these are the things we're looking for because these can turn into colon cancer. Here's another one, it's a little less conspicuous, and um, we will take a biopsy of this, and that is how we can remove polyps, either through biopsy forceps or a uh, lasso procedure, basically a snare. Now he's inserting a biopsy forceps down through the scope. The nurse is assisting him there, and he will tell her basically when to open and close the biopsy forceps. And this will just give you some tissue that you can test? Yes, yes. And here you see he is opening, he's putting the forceps around the polyp, 
and taking a bite of tissue. Now, this looks impressive on the screen. This is only a couple millimeters of tissue that are being removed. And on here, because it's so magnified, it looks much larger. And that's the nice thing about the procedure is it does magnify so we can even pick up small things. Now, the nurse uh, assistant is removing it, and she'll put it in a jar to send off to the lab. Now, this is showing that there's some retained fecal material in the colon. What he is doing is using the channel to flush some water through. So you can clear the mucosa, then you can suction that extra water out through a channel in the scope to, so you don't miss small lesions like polyps or other abnormalities of the mucosa. This entire procedure will take about how long? 20 minutes or so, 15 minutes or half an hour, depends on it. If there's a lot of pathology, a lot of polyps that need to remove or biopsies, then it will take a little bit longer, but usually 15, 20 minutes or so. Now we saw you take the, the bit of tissue for the biopsy. Yes. While you're doing the colonoscopy, do you actually remove those polyps, or is that a later procedure? No, they are removed at the time of the colonoscopy, yes. So after you have this procedure, the colonoscopy, mm -hmm. How about recovery? Then what does the patient do? Is there a recovery time? Well, usually the patients will go out to our recovery room, and they're usually there for anywhere from a half an hour to an hour after the procedure. It just depends on how long it takes them to awaken from the anesthesia that we give them. Most patients are drowsy for the rest of the day, so we certainly don't recommend doing any major activities or driving. The day after the procedure, you're completely back to normal. Um, are there complications? Can there be complications? There can be. It's a safe test, but certainly with doing biopsies, there's a small risk of bleeding or infection. Those are rare. Rarely there can be a perforation or tear in the wall or lining of the colon that could require surgery. That is very uncommon, but we certainly go over that with everyone because it is an invasive procedure, so we like to make people aware of that. And again, it's very much recommended that especially 50 and over yes, have this. Yes, definitely, definitely. Even before you have any kind of symptoms. Exactly. That's why we like to pick people up early so we can take care of the polyps so they don't grow into something down the road. Dr. Patton, thank you so much for being here and taking some of the mystery out of this procedure. Thank we you very much. It. Thank you. After this break, we have local doctors answering your medical questions in our house call segment. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Chef Tony, and now there's a knife so sharp you can cut a pineapple in midair. It's the Miracle Blade 3 Perfection Series. This is my all-purpose slicer, the ultimate in slicing knives. You'll also get rock and chop, rips through ribs, plus you'll receive my filet and boning knife. Filet fish right down to the skin. And my chop and scoop, chop parsley and fresh herbs in seconds. Watch, flex, and scoop right to your favorite recipe. And you get my paring knife to peel fruits and veggies. I'll also send you four steak knives. Call now and you'll get my perfection shears and a second Miracle Blade slicer absolutely free. But wait, we'll send you a second complete set of knives free. Just imagine, that's now nearly $500 worth of knives for just one payment of only $39.95. And if you don't think the Miracle Blades are the best knives you've ever used, just return them for a full refund. So call now. No, no, really. High Def is terrific. A lot of people are asking about our digital 2.0 High Def product. Nature shows are great. We train our CSRs to explain how nature shows, sports, and science programs just come to life in High Def. Football games, science, you know, anatomy. Grace, good for you. Can you imagine a little High Def on those docks? <laughs> Our house call segment gives you, the viewer, an opportunity to ask questions about your own medical concerns. We have doctors from the Northern Kentucky Medical Society ready to answer your questions. Our first question today comes from Norma in Alexandria. I have been having numbness in my fingers and an achy feeling in my wrist. Sometimes the pain wakes me up at night. My sister says I might have carpal tunnel syndrome, but I don't use a computer. Is that possible? Well, we asked Dr. Gordon Eyre to answer this question. Norma, I think your sister could be right. Uh, we commonly associate carpal tunnel syndrome with repetitive activities such as using a computer, but in truth, most of the folks that we see really don't engage in those activities. Uh, the problem is caused by pressure on a big nerve in the palm of your hand, and it can cause what you describe in the way of numbness and at times pain which wakes you at night. 
uh, it can be treated with bracing and medications and occasionally requires surgery. Uh, so I think I'd recommend that you talk to your doctor about it the next time that you see him. Thank you, doctor. Dr. Lisa Miller answers this question from Ed in Erlanger. My two-and-a-half-year-old son does not talk very much, only single words, and never in complete sentences. There are no other siblings in the family, but he does go to daycare during the week. I'm worried that he might fall behind. Should I be concerned? Ed, I think it is time to look into things a little bit more. Most two-year-olds have at least 100 words and can put two words together in phrases. By the age of three, they can put three words together. So your doctor would want to ask some other questions. Did he pass his hearing test when he was born? Is there any family history of hearing problems or speech problems? Has he had a lot of ear infections or tubes in his ears? Does he show other areas where he's delayed? The speech therapist may need to do an evaluation to see if he needs speech therapy. And if he does, there's a good chance that he'll make a good improvement. Thank you, doctor. Our final question comes from Francis in Hebron. I recently had my 40th birthday. I'm in good health, but I have never taken vitamins. Since I'm feeling okay, is it necessary for me to begin taking vitamin supplements? We went to Dr. Adam Crawford for this answer. Francis, vitamins are always a good idea. For most people, a once-a-day multivitamin, which can be found at most grocery stores and pharmacies, is the perfect option. In addition, as you're 40 and expecting to go through menopause in the next 10 to 15 years, you also might want to consider adding an extra calcium pill. A total of 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium is probably what you need. And our thanks to Dr. Ayer, Dr. Miller, and Dr. Crawford for their professional medical advice. Well, that wraps it up for this edition of this month's show. We would like to thank our guests, Dr. Ross McHenry, Matt Grimes, and Dr. Carla Patton. Very special thank you to our sponsors for their participation in this edition of Healthline. Now, if you missed some of the information listed on today's program, or if you have a question that you would like answered in our House Calls segment, be sure to go to the Northern Kentucky Medical Society website, click on the Healthline button. All of our program information is listed there, and you can even email us your questions. Each of our Healthline programs will air several times each month, so check those listings for the days and the times. We hope you will join us again next month for a brand new program, and we hope that you will find out how to get a good night's sleep. Goodbye for now. I'm Betsy Ross. This has been Healthline, presented by the Northern Kentucky Medical Society. Get out of credit card debt now with Safeguard Debt Management Services. Safeguard is a debt management company dedicated towards helping you get out of your mounting credit card debt while still meeting your monthly financial obligations. Regardless of your credit history, Safeguard negotiates with your creditors and lowers your interest rate down to 0 to 10%. We consolidate all of your credit card payments into one low monthly payment. You could save thousands of dollars. On the Safeguard Debt Management Plan, I've saved thousands of dollars. Safeguard has made my life easier. The Safeguard Debt Management Plan ended up cutting my interest rates in half. The customer service department is great. My credit counselor even called me to make sure everything was going all right. They gave me a light at the end of the tunnel. We consolidate your credit card payments into one low monthly payment, and you can save thousands of dollars. Pay off that debt in a fraction of the time. Call now for a free no-obligation analysis. Safeguard is saving thousands of dollars. The bottom line, Safeguard got me out of debt. Call now for a free no-obligation analysis.